Okay, so welcome to Vedas Chess Hub, and it is the day when we play a game, and it's a slow game. Well, I have been saying it uh, for a long time now that the students need to understand how to use the time because in the tournament I uh, really was a little annoyed to see everybody playing so fast and so carelessly. Um, it's high time that students learn how to play slowly. Um, by promise, I mean that they are showing their class and they are promising a bright future. That kind of promise is called showing promise. Uh, not that you have assured to give me something, but promise means that you uh, are playing very well and it's a promise of a bright future. All four of you, I'm very impressed. Um, we will now, has Jay joined us by the way, is Jay with us? I wonder if Jay is with us. So, before we go ahead and start a game, there is something that I want to talk about. And um, the thing is about arrows. Now, we are going to talk about how to use your time effectively, how not to play rashly, um, optimum utilization of time, all those things. Well, I have noticed that when whenever you draw arrows while you play, like I do, well, that does help you manage your time because when you draw arrows, it will consume some of your thinking time there. And maybe in the process of drawing arrows, you will realize that, okay, there's something that you're missing. I have been sent a video by Purvesh Kulkarni, Master Purvesh Kulkarni. I'm going to share that with you. Observe how he draws the arrows. However, he drew the arrow after making the move. My suggestion is that you should draw the arrow before making the move and that will definitely help. That will definitely help. Okay. Um, I am saying that watch this video. There's no music there. It is this video while he plays on his uh, laptop. His laptop has also got this touch screen. So he's able to draw the arrows. Watch this video and inculcate this habit. Again, Samartha will ask me what is inculcate. Meaning develop this habit within you that uh, you will use the arrows because when you use arrows, you will take time instead of just impulsively playing and responding to the moves urgently, which I have observed is very bad thing on Friday, learn to draw arrows. So let's take a look at this video and I promise I won't go on the mute thing. I promise you that and uh, watch this video and later we'll talk about it and then we will start our game for today so let me take you straight to the video hello puja ma'am thanks for joining us by the way and uh, i want you to now enjoy this video Okay, so you watch the video and uh, the thing about this video is that uh, he was trying to show a plan but the unfortunate thing is that he showed the arrow after making the move. So get my point, what I'm saying is before you think of making your move, you can draw an arrow that will just take those valuable seconds and maybe just stop you from being impulsive. And maybe that can control some blunders. It's a very nice idea. There are four different colors that you could use on Lee Chess. We always use that for our tactic session. We use them, don't we? So go ahead and draw the arrows. I think the it's a it's a great idea if you can do that. 
I'm sure you can tell me what you think about it, but it's a very nice video uh, that uh, we have been sent by Master Urvesh Kulkarni. And people ask me how to draw the arrows on mobile. I don't know about how to draw the arrows on mobile. Anybody who knows that is free to share over here. However, I will help you with how to draw arrows when you're playing on your computer. The simple thing is if you right click it, I, I repeat, if you right click, it's the green arrow, the standard green arrow, right click and drag. If you use the right click with the shift button, I repeat, if you use the right click with the shift button, then you get a red arrow. I believe if you press the right click with the alt button, you get the blue. And finally, the uh, control and alt with the right click gives you that yellow arrow or the golden arrow or the chrome arrow or whatever that color is. Okay. I repeat. If you only use the right click, you get the green arrow. If you use the right click with the shift key, then you get the red arrow. If you use the right click with the alt button, then you get the blue arrow. And then if you use the control alt, control alt both along with the right click, then you get uh, the golden arrow. So hopefully that is a good thing that you can incorporate in your games. Those who know how to draw it on when while playing on mobile should share it. I have never tried it on the cell phone. If it at all happens, I'm not sure. Please let everybody know. At the moment, at the moment, I think it's time for us to go to leeches. And today, um, as usual, I will keep the moves, the the decision making in front of you. So let's read it. What you have is, we will look for a forced sequence. That's a tempo gaining move. We will look for hanging pieces and tactics. The next thing is we will make a developmental move or we will make a strategic move or we just make a waiting move. That is the way I decide on my moves. And uh, that is what you should also do. Have this checklist. So on Friday, this time when you play, because I'm very serious about this. So this Friday when you play, ensure that you also have a certain checklist mentally prepared when while you play and like I'm going to check one, two, three, four. And for checking that again, you can use the arrows and then play a cool and calm composed game of chess. So well, that helps after the game is over. If we have time, then we will go ahead and do the tactics. Surely we will do that. Even there's one other discussion I want to have with you is how many tournaments should you play? Because then what our juniors do is they just they just create tournaments upon tournaments. Don't do that. We will talk about that later after the game. Remind me about that after the game is over. So I think now it is uh, uh, time for us to start the game. Ankit has shared with us that arrows cannot be drawn on mobile. For that, you need the PCDB app. What is that? I've never done that, so I don't know. So yes, Ankit has helped us. Ankit is saying that, you know, you cannot do that. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. So um, let's start. Let's go to leeches. You can copy the moves. That is the way to make the moves. Let's search for a good opponent. We are looking at a classical time. 15 plus 15, is that okay? Or do we want 30 plus 0? I think 15 plus 15 is fine. By the way, this was yet another suggestion uh, from, I'll, I'll adjust the board and everything, don't worry. This was one of those suggestions. Okay, this was um, a suggestion by one of uh, our viewers that I should have this uh, brown board but never a green one. So we will go, go back to that wooden theme but not a green one. You all seem to like this setup. Let's stick to that. Again, Immediate observations. We're playing Alex. Alex, what do you know? It could be from UK, Alison. Doesn't mention that over here. And uh, he has played 58 classical games. 
58 classical games. Now, in this position, this position is very nice. I've seen this position quite a few times. Uh, there could be a move like uh, c4, c5 and c4 trapping the bishop. This is a very popular line. So, we will try to do that. Well, the arrows are not very clear, right? When you play on the wooden board, the arrows are not quite clear. So, let us keep the board theme as brown. Because the arrows at least are very clear, guys. I'll let the pieces be alpha. So what do we want here? And remember, this is 15 plus 15 game. So I am in no rush to make my moves. This is what you forget when you play your games on Friday. Please remember that. So here... I think we will stick to our plan of c5 and c4 that just traps the bishop. Today, again, one more time, as usual, I will say this, that the win or loss does not matter. Of course, you play to win. You don't play to lose. But the more important thing is putting in decent moves you put decent moves in the game with some proper thought so one thing that you can learn from this is how calmly i am playing when you know when i see the tournament on friday and even allison can second that because we are viewers we tend to see the rush everybody is in a rush to finish their game don't let that happen play slowly play a good game of chess that will be much more rewarding than some planless, careless play. Don't do that. Don't don't let that happen. Our opponent has played a move which is exactly in line with what our plan was. So it's definitely calculated that. See now this this is what happens when you think and play. So our opponent put a thought in. Like why did we play c5? We want to push c4. So he's played d3. I like that. But this is how you got to play. Now let us use our checklist. What is our checklist? Our checklist is a forced sequence. Now do I have a forced sequence here? Do I, uh, Are there any hanging pieces? Well, yes, this pawn here is a hanging piece. I can attack that. And also I can incorporate a developmental move. So if I play a move like knight to c6, not only am I developing the piece, but also attacking the hanging piece. Is it not? That's, that's fantastic. Let's do that. Is there any trap for us to be aware of? Bishop takes, king takes, and then maybe the queen check, pawn push. Is there something we should be aware of? I can tuck my king to g8 here, is it not? It wouldn't be a bad idea to first play this e6. We'll transform it into some kind of Sicilian if we do that, I'm sure. Knight c6 looks good to me, I'm going to do that. Well, yes, happy Ashadi Ekadashi to all the students as well. So it's a day of fasting, by the way. Good question. Avnish is asking, can our opponent see the arrows made by us? No, our opponent does not see the arrows made by us. So you can go. Otherwise, why would I be doing this? No. Welcome. Uh, has Prathamesh just joined us? Now, I don't like this move because this just opens up this diagonal. I've said this so many times. That is not good at all. Of course, he's just made sure that he's covering e4 square in case I want to make the typical queen maneuver. Hmm. But of course, this comes in defense of the pawn attacked by the knight. How about we attacking it one more time if you want? 
or maybe push e6 first and then go for d6 H hanging pieces well nothing is hanging really at the moment we could try our hand at a5 and a4 with the same idea as well but i think it is high time that we do something about this diagonal so for one move i'm going to go e6 and later we have this uh, a5 uh, a4 plan Again, notice that I am 4 minutes down on time. 4 minutes down on time. Do not get distracted from what the lecture is trying to teach you. It's very important. Hey, and now Arya has joined us. Guys, uh, let me come on cam for this. This is very important. Guys, we have our new uh, student joining us. Her name is Arya. And uh, hello, Arya. She is only five years old imagine that so i want everybody to just say hi arya she is just five years old five years old so hello arya please um, try to understand whatever you can understand i hope you are with uh, you must be with your mom i suppose or with your dad but welcome arya just five years of age and nice very good i'm really impressed yes we have a new viewer a baby viewer welcome arya hope you're fine okay so now let's uh, if you're done saying hi no uncle don't worry you can draw the arrows you can draw the arrows you, our opponent does not see those arrows Ankit, do not be worried, but it, the idea is just to get the arrows in so that you take some time before you make your moves and not make some hasty moves. Uh, so he has played queen here to g4 just with the idea to put pressure on this pawn, but I don't see quite the logic of why he is doing all of that because I can just chase the queen out right now with a move like h5. And that will give me a tempo, so I like that. Is there anything else that he seems to threaten? Nothing. I'm going to go for it. So this will again mean that I'm going to make his queen move one more time. Yes, there you go. So his queen has moved one more time. Now, I don't want to keep chasing the queen because the queen just comes back here. That's not what you want. You've done enough. However, I have a nice plan. We'll go bishop e7. And if he's careless, well, then bishop h4 seals the queen. However, the moment I play this, he'll be in a position to take this pawn. I should be well aware of that. Hmm, then if we give the check, well, then he plays just g3. So we lose a pawn for nothing. No, that is not good. The other idea I have in mind now is to go for knight to d4. Then planting my knight on f5. Also looks pretty decent. This will work well because our opponent has brought the queen early. While look at the development, there is nothing here. Now, Arya, since you have joined us, I will definitely be a little tempted to ask some questions to Arya. Uh, Arya, do you know the names of the pieces? So, do you know? Let me just circle. Do you know what this piece is called? We just now move to e3. So, it's maybe then Arya's father will have to type. So does she know what this piece is called? Just type yes or no accordingly, I will respond. What is this piece called that just made its move? And now by the way, it's played this piece here. I won't say the name because I've asked this question to Arya. By the way, we, now we have to be careful. We have a student, Arya. And the girl Arya. <laughs> Very careful. Arya Mahakal and Arya Shetty. Okay. Hmm. I'm waiting for your answer, Arya. So we have a plan here now. <clears throat> we have this knight f5 for at the moment always remember this bishop is dropped back it just anchors everything so you don't have this particular fork lined up 
because of this bishop but yes you do have a nice fork on uh, the square f5 and again gaining tempo on the queen and after that I could play bishop e7 because then the knight will continue to guard the pawn so who knows that's nice things are looking good for us I'm a little worried about our bishop imprisoned on c8 here well Arya thinks it's camel let me come on cam for that well Arya Yes, uh, normally in Hindi you call it unt, but you don't translate that as a camel in English. When you say, uh, when you want to refer to that piece in English, you say, you say a bishop. Remember that, bishop, okay? The unt in Hindi doesn't translate exactly as camel in English. For chess, you, you refer to the piece as bishop. So Arya, that's your first education. The first piece you've learned is a bishop by the way Alison now has somebody else to admire is it not along with Prajna <clears throat> along with Prajna now Alison has uh, someone else to admire a five year old well yeah Chopping off this bishop will also be a very good idea. You'll be crippled. If I play this, I guess I won't gain much by getting this piece. Surely he's going to move the queen everywhere. So let's go with this. And then we again can put another knight strongly and firmly here let's go for a move like d5 where does he put his bishop then but surely gaining some momentum Thank you, Shriram. Shriram has shared more input for Arya. Very good, Shriram. Thank you so much. That is correct. Well, I guess I'm going to make a very orthodox, or uh, not a unorthodox rather, unorthodox move like Rook G8. Because I certainly want to play bishop e7 somehow. Let's do it. Let's do it. That was expected. Now I'm going to play bishop e7. And probably push this pawn. Who knows? My bishop is a little in a spot of bother here. I must say. Oh, I love this. I love this. Whenever this rook and queen and king are in one line, I always, always relish that idea. Really love that idea. He cannot push, uh, he cannot stop my pawn advance here for sure. That is a fact. If I push this, it's uh, supported twice and attacked twice. This one is one, two, three, and four. One, two, and three defenses. Oh, just. Otherwise, I would have so loved to get g5 also in. Let's try to improve a little bit. on the bishop side can he aim for this no he doesn't have anything there I think b6 makes sense looking at the long diagonal we have one third of the time left thank you Ankit G A U J What how do you make the 
how do you pronounce it okay now we have the knight which is being attacked so i think a very pretty square for the knight is b4 very pretty square if he wants to give up his bishop for my knight all right fine by me now he dare not move his queen here somewhere Bishop b7 does make sense now. Let's see now. We have got one, two, three attackers and one, two and three defenders for this. So I am definitely going for this now. Let's count it. Attackers one. 2 and 3 and the defenders 1, 2 and 3. I like this. Yeah, go Goj. Okay, Goj. Nice. Thank you, Ankit. By the way, Arya, you should make a note of this. So maybe Arya's dad should make a note of all of this. Okay, so what's up now? I think we have a plan. We could go for this move where we threaten the queen. Even better. Well, why has he just given a free pawn here is beyond my understanding. His next plan obviously is f6. So why not take it? Why has he just given a free pawn here? That's a free pawn. Surely, that's a free pawn. Why do that? First, we will try to chase the queen here. Yes, 100%. And I'm just waiting for him to go to f2, which I think he will do. Yes, oh, just one square more. <laughs> one square more. And now the check is definitely on because he was trying to shut the uh, diagonal. attack more mind you this probably would be a bad idea for him would it wonder okay well turned out it was bad for us Lot of distractions today. How about this? And he's planning rook takes. How about pushing this pawn? Yeah, I like that. I like that. Well, this is a very nice idea because the point is that it just cuts this particular defense. More importantly, to maintain support, if it takes with the queen, that's not possible. And it takes with the pawn, then definitely that's not good. Okay, now what? Now we have to, I suppose, take this. Surely, right? Or do we go for the rook? But then he has this check. Maybe first we just settle things here. No, no need. This is interesting move. Now whether we go for this or maybe even this move looks very attractive to me. Yeah, it does look good this one. But uh, the thing is, he now has a chance to take in every possible way. I'm not worried about the check here.
in fact he takes with the pawn it's going to be made so i'm not worried about that one bit let's do this let's try this let's try this this is nice let him take I'll cast a long. Oh, what's that? What's up? It's a threatening checkmate then? No! He's also planning a fork. Disaster. That was really bad. That is going to hurt big time. Big time going to hurt us. This is a check. We are losing our rook, I suppose. What does he do? Yep, yeah, thought so. Very bad. That knight move was very bad. Very bad. A lot of distractions. The bishop looks good, but we need an open h file to inflict the checkmate, and now we cannot even castle. So maybe we'll have to do something artificially here and there. He is plus four, by the way. He's plus four here. Hmm. Not given a check, which is a big relief. So we don't want to give him another beautiful four. So let us then settle for a rook somewhere, not here, but some other place. He's trying to get the bishop. He's plus four here. Really unhappy with that. Let's tempt him into getting another chance on f6. He wants to exchange the bishop. Surely. That was the plan. He's clear plus 4 for nothing. Clearly losing here. Now this is called just putting pressure upon pressure upon pressure. No, I'm going to resign here. That's it. I'm going to resign. OMG. Let us analyze this and see where and what we could have done better. This all was fantastic. Okay, let's take... Ooh, OMG. Look at that. Guys, look at that. Knight F5. 100% Knight F5 was the move. Okay. Sad. Very sad. I always thought knight f5 was where my knight was going but then I decided that the light color bishop was probably more important and therefore I decided to go ahead with that but knight uh, clearly was going to f5 well this one was unorthodox as I said it's a very odd looking move 
I was too tempted into getting G5. Here the computer says it was good for black, almost drawish, no problem. The knight comes back and goes on F5, but then somehow that knight had to be on F5 square. Okay, so let's see if um, our new student Arya can now has now noted all the names. Before we do something else, we are going to talk about the tournaments today. But first, let me come on cam. So Arya, today what you have learned is that the following are the names of chess pieces in English. First, the king. Then the queen. Then you just learned about the bishop. The unt is not camel exactly. The hathi is not the elephant called the rook. The ghoda is not the horse, although it looks like a horse. Knight, K N I G H T. And the small infantry unit are the pawns. So please make a note of all of these things. For today, if you only understood this much, is fantastic. There's absolutely no problem. Now, one more thing is, I want to talk about this uh, tournament thing. The B batch guys, especially. They just keep creating tournaments after tournaments. Don't do that. So here is my advice. Do not play more than three tournaments per week. Listen to me very carefully. Do not play more than three tournaments per week. That's it. Three tournaments. So I believe for the under 1400, we have a tournament every Tuesday. Then we have an open tournament for all the students on Friday. And apart from that, throughout the week, anytime you could create one or play in one more tournament. But do not play in, you know, excessive amounts. That just is of no use because when you play, you analyze your performance and then accordingly prepare for the next. If you just keep playing, then there is no time to assess your performance. So, uh, Rupa, Shriram, don't just create tournaments. Make sure that you don't play more than three tournaments in a week. Maximum, maximum. And two of the tournaments are official. We have one tournament every Tuesday for under 1400. And the Friday's tournament is for all. So make sure not more than three tournaments. Well, for the moment now, what we are going to do is we have enough time at hand. So I'm going to play a five plus three game. Let's continue and play one more game. We have enough time here. So no need to go to the tactics straight away. In fact, let us go ahead and search a five plus three game. Can we get a good five plus three? Yeah, this is five plus three, but gone. Before I could click my opponent had left. No point to play the bullet when I'm streaming. You don't want to play the bullet. Now three plus two is also fine. We will stick to our agenda. This is the French defense. The Vinavar variation, if he plays bishop before. Arya, one more thing you should study is that you would see that there is A, B, C, D, and there are also numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But somebody please tell Arya in the chat what it is. No, Rupak, it is okay. Next time. Hi. Ravindra Charmore. Can you tell me your name? Is that your name? Thanks for joining. So, looks like we both are going to castle. There you go. Now, this bishop looks silly in my opinion. That's the problem with the win hour. This doesn't work because I have bishop. Well, really? Really? Is that so? Is that so? Do we want to exchange early? So tempting is to take this pawn, but he has this knight capture. Let's extend this, is it not? Nah, let's just take this.
let's just put more pressure definitely chopping it and attacking more should I do that yes should I attack more yes the point being that if he now takes the pawn I have the rook Okay, that was very bad. So he's planning to take here, but I think it's safely covered. Wonder. Plus now my bishop looks deadly. Ooh, now he wants to, you know, be all hero. Isn't this hanging? What do we want to do here? Maybe you want to play this. Give the pawn lead back. What if we play this? He has to take some action, is it not? He can take the pawn, by the way. Anyway. In that case, then let's do this. I think you will take with the rook, will he? We take, we take, and he takes. We are into the end game very soon here. We will take the draw. Okay, we took a draw. What uh, surname are you talking about? Ankit, what surname are you talking about here? Guys, we uh, ended this in a draw. I am tempted to play one more game. This is 3 plus 0. I don't like the idea itself but I am playing this. Because we have time. Let's play this just one more game and then we can continue with our tactics. Okay, you're talking about uh, the new viewer. Yeah, sure. One, two attackers, two defenders, I'm okay there. If he takes with the knight, it's a blunder. By the way, that's a very easy for if he takes with the knight. Now, mind you, this is 3 plus 0 game. So, notice how I play according to the merit. It's very important, guys, that you understand that. If it is a slow game, you play slowly. If it is a fast game, you play fast. Have I given a pawn here? Ooh, that's surprising. No captures. Very surprising. Okay, I like the idea whenever the pieces are in line. Can't tell you how much I really appreciate those things. Mind you, the bishop is 
attack and defend it. He doesn't want to take it, I will. Now I have a nice check. And now the pawn push. What is he going to do with that check, by the way? Nice. Posed a nice question. It's gone back. Now the knight is attacking it. It's protected twice as well. Nice. I want to push the pawn. Quite simple, the idea. Ooh, gaining on uh, tempo on the queen. And wanting the bishop. Can you tolerate that, sir? No. Fine. In that case, now I'm going to do this. If the pawn takes, I can push, right? Can I? Maybe after the rook sack, I can. In some cases, I can sacrifice the rook, by the way. Because I'm sacrificing the rook for knight and the pawn. It's a very important thing. And he has less time, by the way, here. What happened to the camera, dude? So he has done what? It's taken there. I can take here. Now what? Check. This is a plus zero game, guys. Remember that. This is a plus zero game. mate threaten here oh that was bad he just gave us a nice mate okay i think we have got now 10 minutes to spare so that was wonderful now we can go to tactics we can definitely go ahead and do some tactics i hope you are ready with whatever uh, with the thinking caps on and we will start with our tactics let me log out let me take you to the the chat window first yes and in the background now i will get ready for our tactics session our first yes our first position is going to be white to play guys And, uh, well, the new viewer, Arya, what we do here, today you have learned the names of the pieces. And I was, oh, did someone help? Okay, bye, Viyang, you have some classes, you said that. Bye, we, and join us tomorrow, 1800 hours, Viyang, bye. By the way, uh, very important, Arya, I, I had asked you to notice that there are numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There are numbers and uh, there are also letters A through H. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Now, did someone, did, uh, did someone help Arya about what those numbers and letters are? Please type in the chat. What are those numbers and letters called? Very important. Please help Arya understand that. Five-year-old girl. Thank you, Alison. Well, that was a good game, actually. Good victory. Um, now, let's deal with the first position. Type for Arya what those numbers and letters are. The level one, two, three guys can help here. What are those numbers 1 to 8 and letters A to H called? I will think about that rook H2 move that you are saying. I will calculate that in the first classical game. Sure. Thank you, Manas. 
but what are ranks and what are files don't, don't just type ranks and files what are ranks and what are files no 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 are numbers files or are numbers ranks please type it properly spend some time please teach Arya properly thank you Yatharth has been very helpful very helpful Yatharth is saying that A to H are the files and 1 to 8 are ranks thank you so much that is it so please make a note of that and Arya what is the use of that you can locate a square using that so let me take you now to this leeches window now that we are going to practice some tactics that's where we are going to do that suppose I circle this okay and I've encircled this particular square so what's that square look at this this is B and this is 3 so this square will be called B3 note that the letter comes first so it's not 3B it is B3 that's the use of the A B C D and 1 2 3 4 very important that's the use of that so now you know how to plot the points there to locate a square so the square that I have encircled will be called B3 not 3B B3 the letter comes first okay and now guys your arrows for this one it is white to play do you want to play the queen sacrifice do you want to play this rook g6 check do you want to safeguard your queen let's say by playing a move like queen d7 or are you interested in a free pawn capture by the move queen takes f5 as usual you will have uh, <clears throat> you'll have two minutes so you will have two minutes of thinking time calculate and let me know which arrow is the best move to make for white in this situation it is not black to play it is white to play okay the time is up so now the seniors can start punching in their answers thank you Nijapkar by the way clarification Arya Mahakar your spelling first name is A R Y A that's correct you are Arya she is Arya so I think it is better done double A R Y A so we say Arya instead of Arya but yeah there is a way to do it I have often uh, seen that the girls named Arya they always spell it as double A R Y A so in this case I think it's spot on double A R Y A as a matter of fact 
let me now share this interesting observation the the guys whose name is aditya should also do it with a double a d i t y a not a d i t y a so there again you should have a double a there but uh, your name arya mahakal you do it as a r y a so remember arya and arya so i am going to put it as double a r y a anyway the correct answer was the red arrow indeed discover check and we win the queen so so many people with the correct answer let me do it and what's going to happen is now arya should watch this the rook moves the red one is the best one here so the rook would move to g6 moves in a plus sign cannot jump over pieces by the way so the rook would move and give a check <clears throat> and even if black were to take the rook our queen then can take black queen for free so all those who voted for the red arrow congratulations i am going to do that and success so congratulations now the next one is again white to play so let me take you to the board white to play guys white to play so are you interested in giving the check or are you interested in taking the knight with the pawn or do you want to develop another piece and do you want to play the knight to d2 or do you want do you think that it is important for your king to be safe from this this diagonal where the bishop is going to check and so you want to play king h1 or do you think it is none of these although i have given you options do you think it is none of these start thinking okay so the time is up and by the way uh yeah sure here the green arrow makes complete sense because it is made in two and that's why sometimes you got to calculate it uh, through all the way through you just can't stop at the first move because often then you don't get the complete picture or the complete idea that is very important you should calculate that uh totally so this is absolutely right here i think the green arrow leads to mate in two let me take you to the leeches uh, window and execute that here we go and i think it's going to be mate in two so queen h7 check with the help of the bishop so king cannot take the queen the only square is king f8 and then queen h8 will just checkmate so those who thought of this and maybe thought that the king will just escape you did not think it through with queen h8 checkmate so there is no reason for us to take the knight fantastic
fantastic indeed and uh, congratulations to those who thought of this wonderful brilliant indeed and we will do one last tactic for today uh, i think the next one uh why no this time it's black to play okay that's a surprise it's a, it's a black to play position let me give you your arrows do you want to flamboyantly take the pawn do you want to play the move knight to g3 check do you want to play this uh rook taking the rook move that is rook takes a8 or do you want to actually play something like uh, b5 at uh, oh attacking that rook yeah sure that can be a good idea do you want to do something like that i would give you a better option wait not this one how about taking this pawn sure so i have given you your options now you can start thinking 2 minutes Okay the time is up what are the seniors saying the seniors are saying well nijabkar says knight takes f2 so mitra is also saying knight takes f2 well by the way after knight takes f2 what the thing is king g1 it's a double check it's for queen g5 check queen g4 finally there is mate so ankit also supports the blue arrow now this is very important to understand yet again so many times you done such positions double check is powerful now this is new for arya our new student arya watch this so let's go to leeches okay what you see here arya is that if this knight is to take this pawn it would not be just the check by the knight but also from this bishop in the background so it's called a double check because two pieces are checking it so it's called a double check and which means that the king has to move in a double check you cannot block the check so double check by the knight as shown and also check by the bishop hmm so then let's do it and after that you have a very nice checkmate sequence now what's the checkmate sequence that our seniors have told us they say it's queen g5 check but by the way queen g5 check king takes f2 is the first move i think what about that move 
Nobody shared anything about that move. What about the continuation here? Did did any did anyone do that calculation? What if king takes f2? What happens then? Guys, I'm going to wait here. I don't see an answer where somebody has uh, done that. So here itself, knight h3 is made. Did anybody type that? Knight h3 will be a check and it's a knight check so you cannot block it and that's simply made because now bishop has the h1 square covered while the queen and the knight control everything else. Okay, now be honest. How many people saw this made? Be honest, it was a huge calculation but this was simply knight h3 made. Be honest about it. How many people got that? Okay, by the way, I think it is now time for us to stop. We've had a long session. Uh, in fact, we have overshot the timing. We lost a game. We won a game. There was a draw. I shared this video. And just to sum up the lecture, um, we saw that drawing the arrows is a good tool in order to um, make slow moves very important in tournaments that's why I showed you the video where Purvesh was drawing the arrows so please make sure that you draw the arrows while you play on Friday I should definitely see people playing slowly tomorrow we meet again because tomorrow is the lecture for the A batch there are going to be study games and yes tomorrow well I would try to come up with the players the famous players we have not done that we did not do that last thursday did we no we didn't do that okay so thank you Alison. we will meet tomorrow at 1800 hours uh, up until that time please take care and Arya, once again you were new thanks for joining us hope to see you tomorrow as well from whatever you've understood uh, take care do not venture outside please please take care we will meet tomorrow 1800 hours.